Several years back, we had the opportunity to go to Africa. And for the first time, we came face to face with kids raising kids because they had lost their parents to the disease. And we looked each other in the eyes and said, you know what, we can do something about this. And uh, we started a nonprofit organization working with locals to address disease and poverty. I went in the summer to Mozambique with my dad, and I was 10 years old. And uh, I brought along my soccer ball because uh, I, I know the kids in the villages love to play soccer. And um, in every village, I'd look, I'd look down and see a bunch of plastic bags or uh, rags wrapped up with twine. And um, before I'd get to the village, that's what the kids would be playing with. In, in Africa, when you show up with a real, I mean, a genuine soccer ball, it's a big deal. And Ethan's thinking, boy, here I've, I've got this soccer ball and I've got four other soccer balls in my garage or five soccer balls, something like that. Um, maybe I should, maybe I should give it up. Maybe I should let these guys have this. So when I left, I gave away the soccer ball and uh, the kids went wild, started cheering. It was crazy. After that, we went home to the United States and I kind of kept thinking about it and like, you know, that was awesome. So I talked to my dad and was like, dad, I think I want to help out those kids some more and get some more soccer balls, some quality soccer balls. We, we put together this little strategy because I, I wanted to make sure, you know, as a dad, you want him to be intelligent in his conversation so that when he was communicating with folks, he knew what he was talking about. My first call, I called up this one guy. He owns a soccer store. And uh, I got on the phone with him and I was like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I was kind of nervous, and so I didn't, didn't really know what to say, but I got to the point where I'm like, so would you like to help out? And uh, the guy turned out flat. <laughs> and I could just see Ethan's face, because I was kind of off in the corner, and I could tell that the guy was, was not going for it. I hung up, and I was like, man, this is going to be harder than what I thought <laughs> to get some kids some soccer balls. There are a lot of things we can do to help kids. We can come alongside and help them get an education. We can come alongside and get them water, fill in the blank. But there's something about a soccer ball. I mean, it can, it can bridge ethnicities. It can, um, it can give a kid who, who has a mom or dad on a deathbed um, some hope, give them a coping mechanism. Um, for my son, I mean, he loves the game. And I think it's, I think it's really cool when you can take what you love doing and use it to make the world a better place. I eventually started calling some other companies and such as Franklin and Wilson and uh, Rowlings and they're like, yeah, I'd love to help you out. It's an awesome feeling when people are like, yeah, I'd like to help you help get kids some soccer balls. So far, I think we've hand-delivered around 1,200 soccer balls. I'm going to South Africa soon, and I'm looking forward to hand delivering some balls for the first time since the beginning. You know, we try our best to, in an authentic way, be people who are grateful and let our gratitude motivate us, whether it be going down the street and helping somebody work on their car, or going over to Africa and giving somebody clean water. If that's just sort of the vibe, the ebb and flow of our lives as a family, somehow, in an unexplainable way, it'll get transposed into our kids' lives. I feel like generosity can totally change the way people think about other people and, um, how they react to some uh, difficult situations. It's just part of what we do. It's just, that's, that's, that's what we're created for. Recognizing the needs of others and just doing something about it. That's the deal. And when our, our kids engage in that, when we see Ethan doing that stuff, we go, yeah, that's the way we roll.